Hi, my name is Greg. I have with me here today an Akai Professional MPK-225, and I'm going to walk through how to connect and sync it to any external MIDI device. Everything that we review today can also be applied to the MPK-249 and the MPK-261 as well. Uh, first, you'll need a power supply for the MPK-225. It requires a standard 6-volt, 1-amp, pin positive power supply which can be typically found at any local electronics store. You'll also need two 5 pin DIN MIDI cables to connect the MPK-225 and your external sound module. Now every sound module is different. You'll need to refer to your sound module's documentation for specific steps, but there are a few basic options such as ensuring that it's set to send and receive MIDI and clock information correctly. If you're using a power supply to power the MBK and you do not have a USB cable connected, all MIDI information will automatically route to the MIDI out port, so no adjustments are needed. However, in the instance that you do also have a USB cable connected and you would like to send some controls to the computer and some to your external hardware, the MPK-225, 249, and 261 offer the option to send individual controls to the port of your choice. To adjust an individual control from sending MIDI info between the USB port and the MIDI out port, press the edit button, move a control, press the right cursor button to view page 2, and use the value dial to turn the MIDI to DIN option on or off. If the MIDI to DIN option is set to off, the control's MIDI information is being sent to the USB port. If the MIDI to DIN is set to on, it's being sent to the MIDI out port. As mentioned earlier, the transport controls, meaning play, stop, record, fast forward, and rewind, are sometimes required to send slightly different MIDI information than the rest of the controls in order to function correctly. If the transport buttons are not controlling your sound module, try adjusting the type of message that the MPK transport controls send by pressing the edit button and striking the play, stop, record, fast forward, or rewind button. Then use the value dial to adjust the type of message they send. You can choose between MIDI machine control, MMC, MIDI CC, MIDI real time, and a Pro Tools Express type. If you do not know which one works for your sound module, try each one. The tempo, arpeggiation, and note repeat functions are all determined by either the MPK or the external sound module, depending on your preference. You can change which item is the master clock source by pressing the global button, then pressing the right cursor button until the screen reads clock source. Use the value dial to adjust between internal and external. Remember, if you have the clock source set to external so that your sound module is a master, the sound module must be set to play or record in order for it to send out the clock timing. If you do not, and you try and use the arpeggiator or note repeat function on the MPK, you won't get any sound when you press a key or a pad. You must have the sound module playing or recording in order for it to send out clock information. Now, if you have the clock source on the MPK set to internal, there are some tempo settings in the MPK you can adjust. Press the edit button and then strike the tap tempo button. Use the value dial to adjust the BPM. You can also adjust the time division of the tempo between quarter notes and 32nd note triplets. The gate can be adjusted between 0 and 99% and the swing can be adjusted between 50% and 75%. Whether you have the clock source set to internal or external, there are a number of ways to adjust the built-in arpeggiator and note repeat functions in the MPK. The arpeggiator, for example, allows for a number of different types of arpeggiation. To change the arpeggiation type, from the main preset window, press Edit and then strike the arpeggiator button. Use the value dial to change between arpeggiator types. And there are a number of different variations that you can choose from, like up, down, inclusive, exclusive, random, chord. Feel free to experiment with any and all of them. 
Another arpeggiator setting is called range. In the arpeggiator edit window, use the cursor down arrow to highlight the range field. Each increasing number adds a note one octave higher to the key that you are playing. And this can be adjusted between plus zero and plus three. The gate and the swing of the arpeggiator notes can also be adjusted. Press the edit button and strike the arpeggiator button. Use the cursor down button to highlight the gate or swing field. Gate can be adjusted between zero and 99% while swing can be adjusted between 50 and 75 percent. Now gate affects the length of the repeated notes in the chosen time division, while swing is the slight shifting of the position of the notes to just off the beat. The note repeat settings are similar to those of the arpeggiator with a few differences. Uh, the first and main difference is that note repeat affects the pads and not the keys while the arpeggiator does the opposite. Again, if you have the clock source set to external, be sure that you have your sound module set to play or record in order for the note repeat function to work as expected in the sound module to send clock information. To view and adjust the note repeat settings, from the main preset window, press edit and then strike the note repeat button. Use the value dial to adjust the time division between quarter notes and 32nd note triplets. Notice the difference in how quickly the pad LED flashes when you do so. With mode set to toggle, the note repeat button, when struck, stays active or inactive. With mode set to momentary, the note repeat button only activates when pressed and held. Finally, the note repeat edit window also allows you to adjust gate and swing in the same way as the arpeggiation gate and swing options. Well that's about it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember that this is just a review of how to set up and sync an MPK-225 with an external sound module. There are many more features and options that we did not explore, so play around and have some fun with it. You can find links to a number of other helpful articles below in case you'd like to learn more. And if you have any troubles or need technical assistance, the folks at Akai Professional would be happy to help. Just visit www.akaipro.com forward slash support and you can reach out to them there.